Well, what's up, Cowboy Nation and Cowboy Headquarters? It's your boy G, the number one cow. Uh, well, let me say that again, number two. Yeah, that's the story behind that. But anyway, uh, hope everybody's doing okay. Um, just get got through uh, evaluating our final preseason game. And thank everybody for being a part of this channel, uh, being a part of this Cowboy Huddle, where we come together and talk nothing but Cowboy Talk. Uh, we talk about our players, we talk about our coaches, we talk about our owners, we talk about general managers, we talk everything about Cowboys and on this channel. And I want to thank you guys for being a part of this. Uh, so here we are. Our final score was um, 34 to 14. I stopped looking at it around about two minutes in the game. A little bit, a little bit less than two minutes, and um, let's just talk about what I, what we all saw. I'm sure we all saw um, different things about the game, but first I'm gonna start off with. Uh, it was kind of hard to evaluate in the beginning, and I say that due to the fact that you know Ur Urban Meyer started his uh, starters, and you know there was a time we. As a team, we used to use the, I think the second or third game where, or first or second game where we we let the starters come in and probably, you know, do a couple of series or whatever. But for whatever reason, uh, we did not uh, not allow Dak or Zeke. And we gave our starting receivers and linemen very limited reps, which that's something that Mike McCarthy feels good about doing. Um, I always say, well, I've been saying, you know, by Mike keeping Dak out and not getting any reps, this would either make him a hero, hero or a zero. Okay, and I say that due to the fact that um, because of no reps can create rusty rustiness, I guess it can it can create slowfulness, things like that. But um, Mike McCarthy is an analyst. Uh, he likes to analyze everything. He feels that it's best to save Dak from Dak due to the fact that Dak does not know how to play half speed. So, uh, again, we'll find out what, what uh, our first opening game will be like due to the fact that Dak hasn't taken any reps. Okay, with that being said... Back to what I saw. So Urban Meyer decided to, you know, start his starters. And I understand what Urban Meyer is doing. He's trying to get a, a win culture in the locker room, knowing that this is his first year, first year quarterback. So let's get some wins under our belt through the preseason, which it's a psychology, it's a psychological move. You ask me, you know, get these guys to buy into his system, you know, which was great. And he basically had to see what he had. You know, having a new team, so you know it's to it's. I always say that it's it's to the the the, the coach's discretion, and we just decided to go the route that we went. But with that being said, so it was kind of hard to evaluate in the beginning due to the fact because our backups was going against their starters, and I looked at ah, well, yeah, it's not fair. But then again, at the same time, guys, if you guys plan on being on the field on Sundays, you're going to have to produce. You have to produce against the ones. If you if you believe that you are a a first string player, you have to play like one. I was a little disappointed in our D line with Bohana, uh, Quinn Bohana, Bohana, and uh, Josh Hamilton. Didn't see much push from them. No pressure on the quarterback. I was a little little concerned about that. They didn't get too many hurries against that starting offensive line. Um, but my biggest concern was what we had talked about was the um, <clears throat> the uh, cornerback battle. And from what I saw today, boy, let me tell you, our, our cornerbacks look god-awful, like my buddy say. That was god-awful. <laughs> so, yeah, Nation Wright, um, not quite ready. Uh, boss man fat, Kevin Joseph, not quite, quite there yet. And, uh, Man, I'm going to tell you, Deontay Burton, baby. You might want to start packing your bags. They picked on you all day, and you gave up so much today. It was sad. I hate to say it, but this was the this was the opportunity for you to step up and shine. This was, this was the time to promote yourself. This was the time to sell yourself on this 53-man roster. 
So with the cornerback battle, I, I, I truly believe that we'll only have we'll have Trayvon Diggs on one side and Anthony Brown on the other side. So this is the good thing about this scrimmage. Again, we can look at it as a win loss, or we can look at it as a way to evaluate of who we're actually going to have on this team. And what I've seen today, it makes it easy to know who's going to stay and who's going to go, who's going to leave. And just like we just talked about the cornerback position, the same back thing with the running back position and the quarterback position. Running back position, we know Rico Dotto went on IR. So guess what? Jaquan Hardy, my guy that I've been pulling for, 5'8", 200 pounds, your opportunity to shine. To me, if you ask me, did he shine? No, he did not. He tiptoed the whole game. It's like the game's too fast for him right now. Coming out of Tiffin University, small college, and then you start playing in this big, big, large stage like that. It can't, it can't cause stage fright. And I think he had a lot of stage fright. He was so busy trying not to mess up to where he wasn't productive. Um, then we saw the opportunity for um, Brennan Knox to get in the game. Well, one thing I can say about Brennan Knox, Brennan Knox got in the game, <clears throat> and uh, he uh, had the opportunity as just as well as Jaquan Hardy. And he was producing. He would come out the backfield, pick up three or four or five yards here, first down here, three or four or five yards here. So he was productive. So now that narrows it down, now we can kind of say who's going to probably be the, the third running back, which to me, if you ask me, I think it's going to be Brendan Knox. Brendan Knox would be that third um, running back that would take that, that role as Rico was going to take. Um, quarterback position. Now, not sure if you guys knew, but we did some restructuring, restructuring, restructuring with Zeke Elliott's contract, and we freed up uh, some 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 space. Uh, not knowing if they're just going to hold on to this money or if they're going to use it to, to go after somebody. But we only scored seven points until probably the last two minutes of the game with Cooper Rush. Starting the game, very non-productive. Um, didn't get us in field goal range, not one time. Um, so, for me, he's marked out. He's X'd off the list. Uh, Gary Gilbert comes in second quarter. Did okay, but I wouldn't really say, hey, he's a true backup due to the fact that he threw one touchdown, but... Um, Throughout the game, again, he holding the ball too long. Um, just, I don't think he's a, he's your true backup quarterback. As I once thought last year, I thought he was when he played against Pittsburgh. But now that I've seen this and to see him on stage and have the opportunity to have that much time on the field and, and only produce seven points, you know, I understand it's not easy, but the he wasn't fluid. There wasn't uh, there wasn't a lot of smoothness in the offense. The offense continued to, you know, it was continue to sputter. Now we know Kellen Moore did not call a plays. Kellen Moore didn't call a plays tonight. It was the uh, quarterback coach Newsour Newsour. He uh, was the uh, play caller for whatever reason. I have no idea. I don't know what they're doing. Kind of reminds me when we had the um, scrimmage, the blue and white game, and <laughs> that was so. That was the worst I've ever seen. Where the uh, broadcasting uh, 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 provider they didn't show the play. They showed the players. You didn't. You only saw the sideline. Oh, that was ridiculous. So I really don't know what Mike McCarthy uh, method or his theory or his philosophy of the game is. But um, we're starting to see a lot of McCarthy signatures on the way he runs his team. And it makes you wonder, is this why Aaron Rodgers had a problem with Mike McCarthy? Because of the, 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 the way he runs the team? Not sure. But um, with that being said, um, I'm not really sold on none of these quarterbacks. And then Ben DiNucci got an opportunity again and again. You know, he threw the one touchdown. <clears throat> and um, Ben DiNucci is one that just basically the stage is too big for him. I, I, I totally believe that. So 
with this money that we've created. Again, I I think it's the need to go out and find a quality backup a quarterback. And I was watching Chicago yesterday. Chicago got three three quarterbacks over there. They have um, they have um, uh, Justin Fields. They have Andy Dalton, and they have Nick Foles. I had an opportunity to watch Nick Foles yesterday, and let me say this here. Um, Nick Foles is smooth, man. Man, that man took that, that Chicago team and moved right down the field. Now, do we have the money to afford him? I'm not sure. I haven't looked at the numbers. But whatever money we do have, that's where I would invest my money. I would definitely invest my money into trying to reach out to Nick Foles and see if we can't get him to come here. Um, the center position, uh, I'm going to say that, uh, Matt Farnick should be our backup center. Saw some good things with him, man. I mean, he held it down. He, uh, made some good plays. Um, got, got, a, got a lot of push in him. <clears throat> and, um, I think he'll probably take, take the position from, uh, Connor Williams. Connor Williams is probably going to stay at guard. That's just basically where I see it. But um, I really think Matt should take that job as a backup. But again, guys, I'm not looking at the win losses. True enough, we went 0 4. We did 0 4. I have no idea. But again, it's also, uh, this game here personally gave us an opportunity to see who can do what and who can't. I'm not sure how many we're going to cut tonight, but there's going to be quite a few cut by in the morning. By in the morning, there'll be a, several that'll be cut tomorrow. And uh, that's the business. But overall, like I say, this was a great opportunity to, to evaluate these players um, to see who's who. Uh, I can't say that Jabril Cox uh, did real well. He was probably, I think, the player of the game for the Cowboys. Uh, I was also... Glad to see that Jalen Smith wasn't suited up. Uh, also, uh, what's his name? Um, Isaiah Alicorn. He was one that was on the bubble. I don't know if I'm pronouncing his right name right. He plays guard as well. But, you know, to see him not suited up means that that's a good sign. That's a good sign that they have a, a, a good chance of making the team. So, not seeing Jalen Smith. Because, you know, everybody's talking about Jalen Smith. Well, he's probably still playing for a a job, but to see him on the sideline not suited up, you know, I can accept that. So, um, again, guys, so now here we are, last preseason game, getting ready to move into the regular season. I'm sure we'll see Dak doing a lot of throwing around, getting prepared for the Thursday night game. Um, so, who knows? Hopefully we come out with something different. Hopefully we come out on all cylinders, come out and, uh, jump out in this season ahead with our first win against Tampa Bay. That would be great. And we start just moving on down the road with, you know, making making uh, strides. Strides to the playoff and maybe to the championship. So we will see. But uh, I just wanted to get on here, guys, and share that with you guys as far as what I saw today. Um, we have got some we got some positions to work work with. A cornerbacks definitely need some work. And old Greg the leg, he's still the guy he is. He kicked the ball on kickoff. The one time we did kickoff, kicked it out the back of the end zone like he always did. He missed a I think a 56 yarder, which come on man. He's gonna bring him out here and put him make him, you know, kick a 56 yard field goal. But uh he was back, you know, kicking the ball, which was a good sign. Um, now as far as his receiver position, Malik Turner look Malik Turner, Malik Turner. He looked really good. I was I was really impressed with him. Uh, Reggie Davis had a guy beat down the field, but Ben DiNucci threw it over his head. So <laughs> anyway, so guys, that's my take on what I saw today. Um, now what we can do is start getting prepared for the season and. Uh, see which direction we go. So, guys, appreciate you guys stopping. 
and watching the video, make sure you hit the like button. Y'all, you guys, let me know what you think we should do. What would you, what would you do after seeing what you've seen today? Who, who should we cut out of the group we saw? Who should we keep? Now, Guilford, he's the linebacker. I saw him. He made a few plays. He's on a bubble. He might make, he might make the team. He's a linebacker. I think he wears number fifty something. Forget. Um, along with um, Ronell, uh, Ronell Carter. Ronell Carter was probably another guy that was making noise. So I think he'll probably stay around a while. So, um, but we will see. We will see. But like I said, it's just my take on what I saw today. And uh, hopefully, guys, uh, we make the best decision, and the coaches will put us in a position that we could be winners. All right, guys, I'm not going to hold y'all any longer. Let's go and finish our weekend and get back to what we were doing. Now we can rest, but you guys stay tuned because I will have more videos coming your way. Uh, make sure you stop by the Facebook page, guys, uh, the Dallas Cowboys Huddle on Facebook. That's where I put a lot of different videos, um, interviews, um, articles on that page. So, Make sure you go stop by there and, and, you know, follow that page and hit the like, leave your comments. Okay, guys, with that being said, as I always say, don't nothing come to a sleeper but a dream. And if we keep dreaming, we're going to keep sleeping. Woo! Later. <laughs>